Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Minnetonka's State of the City for 2018. My name is Geraldine Baroni, and I'm the Minnetonka City Manager. And it's just great to see you all here on a beautiful winter morning. Thank you for coming. Um, it, there's a little excitement in the air. We have a new mayor this year, and so I think uh, sit tight. You'll have an interesting program. We'll have an interesting program for you. I did want to recognize some folks here this morning before our program gets started. We will um, hear from the Rotary and from the Chamber before the mayor speaks, but I did want to make some introductions. Of course, um, our city council here is represented by our new mayor, Brad Wearsome. Uh, council member Patty Acom at large. Patty, if you can, as I, there she is. Uh, <laughs> Council member Deb Calvert, and Deb is our newest uh, member. She's at large as well. And council member Tim Berkstead. Tim, where did you end up? Okay. We also have uh, Representative Bob Ellingson. I don't know that Bob is here yet, and uh, Council Member Tony Wagner. We do have a vacant position. The Ward 3 Council seat is vacant because Mayor Wearsome uh, served in a seat that uh, still had two years left in the term. So we are going to have a special election on April 10th, and filings for the Ward 3 uh, uh, vacancy uh, start on February 20th and run through March 6th. So if you're interested in that, if you live in Ward 3 and if you meet the qualifications and you have more questions, I would encourage you to contact our city clerk, David Maida, here at City Hall. Um, I also wanted to recognize a couple former, uh, recently former members of our city council, Mayor Terry Schneider. <laughs> Welcome back. And Councilmember Dick Allendorf. We have a number of other officials here. We have uh, Jennifer Munt from the Metropolitan Council. Jennifer, where are you? And Hennepin County Commissioner Jan Callison, who, uh, Jan, where are you? Okay. Jan is the chair of the Hennepin County uh, uh, commission and she's near and dear to us because she is also a former mayor uh, and also the uh, Rhoda the Hopkins superintendent are you here I heard that you were here but I hadn't seen you yet welcome oh, thank you. and are, are there any other officials in either legislative or other elected bodies if you're here please stand and, and welcome I think school board okay we've got some school board members thank you <laughs> Steve Adams thanks I wanted to also recognize our volunteer members who serve on our advisory boards and commissions here in Minnetonka. So as I call your group, if you could just stand up as a group. Our planning commission. <laughs> Park board. Oh, I guess they have a long, they have a late meeting tonight, just so you know, on mountain biking. So I think they're resting up this morning. Um, Economic Development Advisory Commission. <laughs> Senior Advisory Board. <laughs> charter Commission. Any Charter Commission? <laughs> and we have a, um, an ad hoc group this year that the uh, Comprehensive Guide Plan Committee. So if you're on that committee, please rise. <laughs> and then finally, I wanted to, uh, last but not least, of course, is our leadership staff. And we have uh, staff folks in the back of the room. And I'll just uh, name our leadership team for you so, um, so you can put names to faces. Our Finance Director, Merrill King. <laughs> Fire Chief, John Vance. City Attorney, Kareen Heine. Our City Engineer, Will Manchester. Will's way in the back. Recreation Services Director, Kelly O'Day. Public Works Director, Brian Wagstrom. And we have a few who are out of the office this morning. Our Assistant City Manager, Perry Vetter, 
uh, uh, Police Chief Scott Burboom and our Community Development uh, Director, Julie Wishnock. And if it weren't for them, you wouldn't be seeing what you see today because they keep the city running and operating and do a, a wonderful job. So thank you. Now I'd like to introduce our uh, president of the Minnetonka Rotary Club, Jacob Milner, and he'll take a few minutes to talk to you about the Rotary. Thank you all and good morning. It's an honor to be invited to address you this morning. Rotary International's motto is service above self. The mission of, the Rotary, of Rotary International is to provide service to others, promote integrity, advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through its fellowships of business, professional, and community leaders. Rotary's six areas of focus are promoting peace, fighting disease, specifically the eradication of polio, providing clean water, saving mothers and children, supporting education, and growing local economies. These six areas of focus build international relationships, improve lives, create better world, and create a better world to support our peace efforts, and more importantly, end polio forever. In addition to these six areas of focus, Rotary has five avenues of service that our members carry out. Club service, vocational service, community service, international service, and youth service. While all of this is vital to Rotary, and it's, it's our members that make the Minnetonka Rotary Club dynamic, each member is allowed to make Rotary their very own. We all come to Rotary in different ways, and we all serve the Rotary through different ways. For example, the Minnetonka Rotary Club's motto is service above self. Our club is comprised of vibrant members. They are the ones in the community every day making a difference through all avenues of service. We have small business leaders and nonprofit executives, lawyers, bankers, educators, men, women, Republicans, and Democrats. We have members in their 20s and members in their 80s. We represent a broad swath that is Minnetonka and our local community. We commit ourselves to this community. We volunteer at Loaves and Fishes, pack books for Africa, clean up Highway 7, work at the ICA food shelf, pack backpacks with Resource West, clean up as the, serve as the cleanup team at, uh, at Empty Bowls, mentor students at Eisenhower, and much more. Our foundation supports international and local projects as well, contributing thousands of dollars locally uh, and abroad each year. As most of you know, the rotary symbol is a gear. And what makes this gear turn? It's the members putting, putting Rotary's theme of service above self into action, our serving our communities, our country, and our world. But we all know the gear by itself can do nothing. It only works when a gear is placed next to another gear and the teeth are intertwined, in this case, the people. That's when the magic happens. That's when we have movement, impact, and make change. I joined Rotary in 2011, and when I joined Rotary, the Minnetonka Rotary Club was about 30 members. Today, it's over 60 members. So why have we grown? We've grown because we do important work. We are visible in the community, and we know there's strength in numbers, and most importantly, we have a lot of fun. Abigail Adams once said, if we do not lay out ourselves in the service of mankind, whom shall we serve? And this qu question encompasses the way we think, what we say, and what we do. Service above self is a most noble concept and a virtuous life goal. We hope that you can join us for Rotary. You're all invited to attend. Uh, we meet Wednesday mornings at this exact time at 7.30 over at Eisenhower right off Highway 7. And I promise you, you will leave the meeting, whether you decide to join us or not, energized and uh, by our positive people and the passion that we have to serving and giving back. If this sounds like something you'd be interested in, please feel free to join us. Feel free to talk to any of the many Rotarians here. I just want to recognize the Rotarians. Please stand up so people can see who you are. <laughs> Feel free to reach out to anybody here and talk to us. Visit our website, MinnetonkaRotary.com. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Deb McMillan from the Twin West Chamber of Commerce. She is the Vice President of Public Policy, and so she'll give some highlights of Twin West. Uh, 
Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Geraldine. As Geraldine said, I'm Deb McMillan. I am the Vice President of Public Policy for the Twin West Chamber of Commerce, and we're delighted to be uh, joining you here again this morning. First off, I want to say congratulations to the new mayor, Brad Wearsom, and the new city council member. Welcome, Deb Calvert. Uh, we look forward to working with you and the city council throughout the year. Twin West is a regional chamber of commerce. We have more than 700 member businesses, and we represent about 55,000 jobs in the western uh, Twin Cities region, including Minnetonka. Our members have represent a variety of businesses and industries, from internationally renowned corporations to home-based businesses. We foster personal and professional growth and business and economic development. We enrich our communities through our philanthropic activities and partnerships with schools and local governments. You can learn more about our partnerships and programs on our website, which is twinwest.com. I'm also pleased to say that we are pushing almost $2 million in scholarships over the history of Twin West Chamber of Commerce, and that's, that's just such an amazing feat for us, thanks to our, our business partners in the area. We have a long history of working with our local governments. We recognize the importance of strong cities in creating a healthy business, business climate. And we appreciate the active involvement and support of our elected officials, as well as the city staff. We want to say thank you to Mayor Brad Wearsome and the City Council, City Manager Gerald and Baroni for including us this morning. And we're grateful for the partnership between the City of Minnetonka and the Twin West Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Enjoy your morning. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our new mayor, Brad Wearsome. Brad was elected mayor uh, in, in the election November 2017, and that's after 15 years of serving as the Ward 3 City Council member here in Minnetonka. He was first appointed to the City Council in January 2003 to fill a vacancy, and then he was elected in 2004, re-elected in 2007, 2011, and then 2015. Uh, Brad is a graduate of Calvin College, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and has a Master's of Bus Business Administration from the University of Minnesota. His community and civic activities include serving as a committee member for Young Life Urban and coaching for Bennett Park Little League Baseball and Minnetonka Youth Hockey. He also serves on the board of the Minnesota League of Cities and is uh, a former uh, president of the Metro Cities as Metro Cities um, organization. So with that, I would like to ask you to give a warm welcome to Mayor Brad Wearsom. I, I neglected one thing. Brad, um, Brad is here with his wife, Karen Wearsom, and they have four children. Thank you, Geraldine. Good morning. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be here. And I also want to thank uh, Twin West and the Minnetonka Rotary Club for your many contributions to our community and, um, and for uh, the sponsorship of this event today. My name is Brad Wearsome, and I'm mayor of Minnetonka. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. I'm excited to be the new mayor of Minnetonka. Okay, now I'm going to push this button. Hopefully it goes the right direction. There we are. So. Um, I believe that the state of our city is good. And here are some highlights of what happened in 2017. First of all, a big change in the leadership of our city. Two outstanding public servants retired. Mayor Terry Schneider decided not to run for re-election after 10 years as mayor and 40 years of service to the city. He left big shoes to fill, and I cannot thank him enough for the leadership he provided to our city and for the many things that I learned from him. Terry is known and respected across the state and region for his steady, strong leadership. Councilmember Dick Allendorf spent 26 years serving the city. And prior to his service as a city council member, he was a Hopkins School Board member. His combined public service is 34 years. Dick was a commanding presence on the city council, and he was a strong defender of taxpayer interests. He critically questioned developers about the mass and scale of their proposals. Dick made us all better council members because of the questions he asked and the observations he made. 
Please join me in recognizing and thanking these two leaders for their stellar records of service to Minnetonka. <laughs> Losing 74 years of public service experience is a big deal, and it will make a difference. Minnetonka has a strong and experienced council, but with the departure of Terry and Dick, our city council has lost over 50% of its years of experience. So cut us a little slack in the coming years. <laughs> we welcome some new businesses to Minnetonka, including Station Pizza, Farm and Vine, Unmapped Brewing, Total Wine, and the Cheesecake Factory, among others. And it's exciting for our city to attract new businesses, and we urge our residents to patronize these and all businesses in Minnetonka because they are what make Minnetonka vital. This year, we also earned some accolades. Minnetonka was named as one of the 100 best places to live by Money Magazine. And we knew that, but uh, it's nice to get the recognition. Minnetonka Mills Park was designated as a great place by the Sensible Land Use Commission or Coalition. Now pause and take a look at the picture on the screen. That is Minnehaha Creek in Minnetonka. It's no surprise that we get to see such a beautiful vista, but we get to see that every day because that's Minnetonka, and that's what make that's one of the things that makes our city great. The Minnetonka City Council also approved a number of new development projects in 2017. These products, projects are not completed yet. Shady Oak Crossing is a 49-unit apartment building that will provide workforce housing. Minnetonka Hills is a new apartment complex near Highway 169 and Minnetonka Boulevard. Masaba Havenwood is a new senior li living facility on Old Excelsior Boulevard, just west of Highway 101. Crest Ridge Senior Living is another senior complex next to the Syngenta Building by Hopkins Crossroad and I-394. And finally, Midwest Mastercraft is a boating retailer that will go in on Highway 7, just west of Highway 101. So, what is ahead in 2018? Well, times are changing. Minnetonka has a new at-large council member, Deb Calvert. Welcome to the city council, Deb. Patty Aikum was re-elected to the other at-large council seat, and congratulations, Patty. And as you know, Minnetonka has a new mayor. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Brad Wearsom. I was the Ward 3 city council member, and I noticed I don't have a name tag. Pardon me for being so presumptuous. I, uh, I, that was an oversight of my part. I was the Ward 3 city council member since 2003. I first moved to Minnetonka in 1982 and lived here for four years. After a move, my family returned here in 1995. My wife Karen and I have been married for 34 years. We have four grown children, Jennifer, Amy, Matt and Andy. Jennifer and Amy have disabilities and they live and are residents of Minnetonka. Matt and Andy live in Minneapolis. That is a pretty abridged version of my background and I can tell you that I am very pleased to be your mayor. Thank you to the voters for making that possible. I will never forget that I work for you. You also have, may have noticed in, in this presentation a new look and a new logo for Minnetonka. And here is an introductory video to uh, tell you a little bit about that. Thank you. 
So what is ahead in 2018 regarding infrastructure improvements and updates? Well, the first thing that is worth mentioning is Ridge Haven Lane, which is off, um, which is in the Ridgedale area, uh, west of Plymouth Road, and that is pictured here. And this is this improvement is going to be a big deal. It's a big project, um, but it will significantly improve traffic flow in the area that is the busiest area in the city of Minnetonka. A second project in 2018 is the Plymouth Road Trail project. And that will improve northwest trail connectivity in Minnetonka and will provide better walkability and bikeability to the Ridgedale area. And then finally, um, in, a, in a routine but big project that is um, utility reconstruction, Woodhill Road uh, street reconstruction will be done, and that will involve um, uh, tearing up the road, putting, uh, building a new road. Um, adding water and sewer and burying power lines. And that's work that needs to get done in Minnetonka because we do certainly have an aging infrastructure and we need to keep our infrastructure strong and vital and safe. And then in 2019, we have the Ridgedale Drive project, which is an exciting project um, on the south side of the mall. That road will be reconstructed and upgraded. It will become a parkway that is bisected by a landscaped median. It will be a significant change with improved walkways and pedestrian access in that important part of our city. One big project on the horizon is an updated and expanded police station and a new fire station, both located here on the city center campus. As the city has grown, demands on both our police and fire services have grown significantly. On top of that, the nature of the services provided have changed and expanded. An aging population translates into more medical calls for both police and fire. Changing gender dynamics, meaning more female firefighters and police officers, creates demands for different kinds of facilities. Lifestyle demands and other factors are causing the fire department to hire more full-time firefighters and duty crews, which also require changes to our public safety facilities. Public safety is the number one job of cities, and Minnetonka is no different. The new facilities have not yet been approved by the city council. The need is there, and the design and architectural work has been approved and is underway. Approval of the project will happen this year or next year, and if all goes as planned, construction will occur in 2020. There is also a lot of important uh, development work on the horizon. And one of the uh, big things that's been mentioned already is work on the 2040 comprehensive plan. Now this nice picture shows uh, members of our planning department uh, hanging out at, um, at uh, um, Unmap Brewing with their, uh, with their Minnetonka sunglasses uh, looking, uh, looking pretty cool. And I, and I really question, I didn't ask them this, but they, they're there for some um, neighborhood conversations. But I was just wondering if, um, if Lauren and Julie just carry that sign when they go out, sneak out of the office on afternoons and go out for a, for a, a, for a beer and just bring that sign to legitimize what they're doing. But I don't know what, if that's the case. But anyway, um, work on the 2040 comprehensive plan is underway with a committee of residents and staff meeting to advance the development of the plan. Former Mayor, Mayor Terry Schneider is chairing that committee. There will be numerous opportunities for public engagement in the coming months. Affordable housing and attracting new and diverse businesses are always part of the work that the city does. With over 47,000 jobs in Minnetonka, there are significantly more workers in Minnetonka than there are households. Having housing for all of these workers who may desire to live in Minnetonka will always be an ongoing challenge. And then Southwest Light Rail. It will be a game changer for the city. It will improve access to the region for our residents, and it will open opportunities for workers who are in scarce supply and who want to access some of the 47,000 jobs that exist 
in Minnetonka. And I think that's an overlooked um, issue with Southwest LRT. We're going to have as many people riding the train downtown as we will, or coming back to Minnetonka for jobs here as we will have in running downtown. And it's a, it's a vital source of economic growth for our community. This next slide gets into this current state of Minnetonka, both the current state of Minnetonka and what I hope we will continue to be, and that is a welcoming community. Minnetonka and Minnesota are becoming more diverse, and rather than being daunted by that reality, we need to view it as a positive and embrace it. Just as corporate boards, investment portfolios, and the natural environment benefit from diversity, so do cities. To that end, the Minnetonka Police have a community engagement officer, Officer Scott Marks, pictured here. He works with the faith community and with diverse populations in Minnetonka to build trust and to make connections and to help members of minority groups feel welcome and safe in our city. In 2018, the city is also beginning its work with GARE, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity, to help our staff and our leadership and our residents to be more aware of our personal biases. And this is kind of an interesting, interesting thing because uh, I've always kind of viewed myself as somebody who's open-minded and not biased, but when I started working with GARE through the League of Minnesota Cities, I realized, you know what, every one of us, every one of us has biases. And it's like anything. If you know you have a problem or an issue, you can work on it. But if you think you don't have a problem, you never do. So I am very excited about the work that we're going to be doing with GARE because it will make us a better city. The city also, excuse me, I went ahead there. The city also formed an employee committee to examine our city policies in terms of hiring to ensure that they are open, fair, and free of bias. In addition to this work, the city is dealing with an aging population. For perspective, people born in the middle year of the baby boom are now 63 years old. That group will have an enormous impact on our city. The oldest baby boomers, and remember the baby boom generation is the largest generation in the history of our country. The, lar the oldest baby boomers are now 72 years old. This group will demand different housing, health care, and recreation opportunities in Minnetonka. And then finally, to keep Minnetonka vital, we need to attract young families. In addition to the outstanding educational resources provided by the Hopkins, Minnetonka, and Wyzetta school districts, as well as numerous private and charter schools, Minnetonka needs to provide amenities that are attractive to this target audience. The excellent Minnetonka park system, our trail system, the proposed mountain biking trails, and other amenities are intended to make Minnetonka attractive to residents and newcomers alike. Looking forward, one of our goals is to build on what we have here and work to continually improving it. Vince Lombardi called it a commitment to excellence. So, what makes Minnetonka so distinctive? Now, I believe we truly have a distinctive and special place in our city. We have outstanding parks, trails, open space, lakes, and creeks. Our neighborhoods are unique with large lots, curving streets. It is not a grid system suburb. It is both easy to get lost in Minnetonka and decide that you never want to leave. <laughs> Minnetonka has an effective and approachable government that wants our residents to be heard we have, an ex have excellent city services that are not cheap, but are viewed by most residents as a good value. Minnetonka has a history of regional leadership. Examples are Metro Cities, the League of Minnesota Cities, and the National League of Cities. 
Minnetonka is a member of these organizations, and our elected officials have held numerous leadership positions in all of these groups. Similarly, our staff are involved as members and leaders of other important local and state organizations. And the benefit for all of us is that Minnetonka has a seat at the table and is an influential voice in the region and at the state level. Finally, and most importantly, Minnetonka is a place that values respect for our residents, for visitors, for our city staff, and for our leadership. Whether we agree with one another or not, in Minnetonka, we treat one another with respect. We agree, to respect, we, we agree respectfully, and when we disagree, we do that respectfully as well. Respect is a critical part of our culture, and it will continue to be in the future. So, what do I think is important for the future? During my campaign, I took kind of a Hippocratic oath for Minnetonka. That is, do no, no harm. Said another way, I just don't want to screw this up. <laughs> now that is not much of a vision, and it is not mine. But job one is to continue to do the things that Minnetonka does well. Provide desirable amenities. Leverage the, the outstanding educational resources provided by Hopkins, Minnetonka, and Wyzetta schools. Focus on public safety so that everyone in Minnetonka feels safe. Reinvest in infrastructure so that roads, water, and sewer services are reliable and safe. I also think that we need to embrace changing demographics. Let's be a welcoming community and let's work to ensure that everyone who comes to Minnetonka as a resident or as a visitor feels welcome and safe regardless of race, religion, or origin. Finally, I want to lay out a challenge for you and for me. Let's get outside the box and outside of our comfort zones. On the radio the other day, it was said that with all of the fragmentation of media, people never have to listen to someone who has an opinion that differs from their own. Now think about that. You know, one of the things that makes democracies great is public discourse and debate. And if we only listen to people who agree with us, where does that vital aspect of democracy go? So here is my challenge. In the coming months, excuse me a second. Um, From, excuse me, from a content perspective, we all tend to live in content monocultures, which is a pretty unhealthy scenario. Now, I don't know if that really applies here, but here is my challenge. In the coming months, let's go out of our way to have a conversation with somebody who is different than we are. Different race, different religion, different nationality, whatever. And let's try to have more than just a, hi, how you doing, typical Minnesota conversation. Let's, let's be willing to get uncomfortable and to talk about the things that we Minnesotans normally don't talk about, like bias or race or what it's like to be a newcomer to Minnesota or Minnetonka or the USA. Let's try to get to know someone new as a real person and not as part of some group. If we do that, I think we will be better. I think we will be kinder. And it will be easier to build that valuable commodity, respect. So that's a wrap. This mayor's uh, first state of the city message is over. Thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions?